Hello, welcome to this teaching video on the Draeger Advita XL ventilator. First, we need to turn on the ventilator. Turn to the back. The on-off button is located here. Lift up the protective cover and press the button once. The ventilator is now turned on. After your ventilator is turned on, we need to do a pre-use check of the ventilator and patient circuit before we can use the ventilator. For the Draeger Vita XL, in addition to the patient circuit, we need a flow sensor and an exhalation valve. Put in the exhalation valve first. This is a reusable exhalation valve. Your exhalation valve might be blue in color. That is the disposable or single patient use exhalation valve. Once it's in, there'll be a click sound. And then insert the flow sensor and slide it into the exhalation valve. Close the protective door cover Next, put on the patient circuit. I have prepared a HEPA filter on the exhalation end and a bacterial filter on the inspiratory end. Over here, there's actually a downward pointing arrow and a, a word over here that says inspiratory. So this is the inspiratory end. There's an upwards pointing arrow here. This is the expiratory end. After I've connected my patient circuit firmly, I go to check, device check, and click one more check here. So instructions for how to do the check will come up here. Before the test is done, it either appears as dashes for tests that are not done yet, or double arrows for a test that is being done now. The first test that I need to do is check correct position of the exhalation valve. Click yes. Connect test lung to Y piece. Confirm with yes. Check correct position of the flow sensor. Is HME filter ready for use? Patient hoses correctly connected. Inspiratory and expiratory. Connect test lung to Y piece. Confirm with yes. Connect air supply. Disconnect oxygen. Connect oxygen. Disconnect air supply. Connect air and oxygen supply. Audible sound alarm, confirm with yes. Now we are doing the sensors check over here. Position CO2 sensor for calibration per instructions. Confirm with this logo here. This logo actually means the rotary knob over here. So once it's fitted into our uh, calibration part, confirm here. CO2 zero calibration. CO2 sensor fitted into a cuvette, which is at the side of the ventilator. Click yes. Now that all our device check have been done, we need to go to airtight check. So for the airtight check, we need to connect it to our Y piece. Seal Y piece, confirm with yes. Keep Y piece open, confirm with yes. After both your tests have been done, you can go to overview. It will tell you the last device check was done at today's date and time and successful and there's zero leakage. After I've completed my device and uh, circuit check, I can actually go on to set the ventilator settings that I need to. Go to ventilator settings. 
Notice the modes are displayed in the tabs above. If there's a mode that's not displayed here, I can go to more to look for more modes. The first mode that I would demonstrate today is CMV. After CMV is selected, this is FiO2. So the range is between room air to 100%. This is my tidal volume, inspiratory time, set rate, slope, and peep. These are the basic settings and there are additional settings on this tab here. Click on the tab. ATC stands for automatic tube compensation. If I turn it on, I need to set either the tube type, endotracheal tube or tracheostomy tube and the tube diameter. However, we don't often use automatic tube compensation as it may, it may provide too much support to the patient and we are unaware of the total pressure in the system. Next is the trigger. This is how the ventilator senses that patient wants to take in a breath. We have to turn it on. Notice that when I select anything that I need to change, it will turn yellow and I need to confirm with the rotary knob. After it's been selected, it turns a darker shade of green. Auto flow, I can choose between on or off and side breaths. Let's start with our basic settings for CMV. Once, once I'm satisfied with the settings, I go to start and click start here. From standby, it will go into the ventilation page. Ventilator settings are displayed down here as what we had said just now. The mode is displayed up here and this is the type of setup I had selected, which is an adult circuit. Over here, we have our pressure time graph, flow time graph, volume time graph, and measured values over here. If we want to look at other measured values, we can go to the third page or the first page. In the volume control mode, we might want to do a respiratory maneuver called a plateau pressure. To do that, first I go to the second page where plateau pressure is shown. Notice that when any alarms come up, there's both audio and color. I can either reset the alarm by clicking on it and confirming that I need to reset. However, I need to check my alarm settings by going to alarm limits. If my alarm limits are not set appropriately, I can adjust them now. Adjust them to what I'm happy with and then confirm with the rotary knob. Close this window. Now I'm going to go back and try to do my plateau pressure. After going to the second page where I can see plateau pressure, I need to go to special procedure Look for inspiratory hole. I need to press inspiratory hole before the next inspiration. Hold the button. You'd see a straight line on the pressure time graph here. And the plateau pressure comes up over here. The other maneuver that I can do is an expiratory hole to look at my total peep. Diagnostics, intrinsic peep, and press start. Notice it's frozen here and my total peep or intrinsic peep is actually displayed over here. Once I'm satisfied with these values, I can go back to my main screen. To choose between different modes, I go back to ventilator settings. Maybe I want to use the pressure mode now. So I go to more and I can choose this mode called PCB plus assist. I need to confirm that this is the mode I need to use later on. Notice that the P inspiratory pressure is 15 and the PEEP is 5. On my peak pressure here, this is exactly the same as my inspiratory pressure. This means that the driving pressure is 15 minus 5. If I increase this value, this increases my driving pressure. My peak pressure should correspondingly increase to 18. However, if I increase my 
Notice how our tidal volumes now are 412. When I increase my peak without making the corresponding change to my inspiratory pressure, this decreases the jarring pressure to only 8. My tidal volumes will correspondingly see a drop.